Today on the homestead, we are making one of my favorite things. It is fermented salsa. Uh, we actually made this recipe with our pineapple uh, tomatoes. So it was a yellow um, fermented salsa. And it was nice, a little bit um, juicy. It was though They're quite watery. It's recommended to do this salsa with your something like a Roma or a San Marzano um, that you can uh, have some good substance I guess they're not really a juicy tomato they're more bulk um, but one thing I was going to say uh, whether anybody is new to finding our channel or uh, have kind of come across us before definitely don't forget to subscribe and definitely leave some comments because we love to hear from you but uh, we're coming up into canning season we're kind of right in the heart of it full swing and there's a lot of recipes that we've kind of been contemplating uh, getting going and some videos going and uh, you don't want to miss out on some of these fun uh, tried and true recipes. But back to the salsa that we're making today. I'm just going to kind of go through all the ingredients quick. Basically what you're doing, this is wonderful, you don't need to skin your tomatoes or anything, you're just going to take cores out and chop them up into whatever kind of size salsa you prefer. Uh, it doesn't have to be super chunky. Um, like I say, it, it just depends on what you and your family enjoy. Uh, we like it medium chunkiness, just to be awkward. But you're gonna cut up everything. I prefer to do it by hand rather than a food processor because I find the food processor really just purees it down and you've got no textures to it. So for this recipe, you are going to need six pounds of San Marzano Roma tomatoes. Like I said, we did try the pineapple as well. It did work, it was just a little juicier, uh, but select your favorite tomato of choice. You're going to want one pound of sweet red peppers. Now you could put orange peppers, green peppers, if they're sweet, yellow peppers, it really doesn't matter. You want to have four jalapenos. There's one more, he's falling in there one pound red onion and that guy almost was a pound 12 cloves of garlic which we're going to be using our own homegrown garlic for this year from this year two cups of cilantro which i'm falling just a little bit short um, you probably could bulk it out a little bit with some parsley but i'm going to just run with it that's fine four tablespoons of sea salt or i use pickling salt if i don't have sea salt have not found any problems either way. I know that sounds like a lot, but when you're fermenting, salt is important. So don't cut back on that. Trust me, it tastes amazing. And one teaspoon of cumin. And those are your basic ingredients. It is very simple. We're just going to chop everything up, uh, press our garlic through the um, garlic press, and go from there. So one important thing that I did want to mention when you are fermenting, you want to use very fresh, very good quality food. Uh, the one thing that you will notice if you ferment is if you use something that's a bit past date, it's not forgiving. Uh, that just becomes kind of a mush. Ugh. Um, <laughs> that's my technical term. Uh, even the, the tomatoes. I stayed with tomatoes that still are firm. Um, Anything that was uh, already gone soft enough and real red, I've saved for paste and sauces instead of a salsa because you want that firm texture when it's fermenting uh, to keep uh, that real good flavor in. Um, same thing with the uh, garlic, cilantro, everything. Try and make sure you've got fresh picked, really good quality food before you start your fermenting. All right, everything is in. So you can see we have our tomatoes, peppers, onions under here we've got green are uh, the jalapeno peppers you want those cut up really there's one on my thumb there quite small uh, nobody wants well maybe maybe some people do want to bite into a huge chunk of jalapeno pepper um, garlic cumin and our salt that's it we're going to stir this up mix it in quite good and it will look very pretty so we're all mixed up and you can see there, the salt is already starting to bring some of the juices out of the tomatoes. That's what you want because you need to have enough juice to cover this when you put your weight on uh, when you're doing your fermenting. So we're gonna start spooning this in. Now, first time trying this, I probably wouldn't recommend doing it this way, but we know we love this salsa. So we are using a sterilized two liter jar to ferment here. Um, 
I started out using uh, one liters, but uh, you can use whatever works for you. The other part that we have here is our weight and the cap. Uh, now, here in Canada, we bought these at Lee Valley Tools. Uh, I know you can get them on Amazon, things like that. Um, do you remember what it was called? Was it just a fermenting kit? I think so. I'll, I'll Google it and see if I can find a link to put down in the description to purchase one of these on Amazon or wherever. But we use this a lot, love this. It makes fermenting so easy and pretty much foolproof. But we're going to get this scooped into our jar. There is nothing fancy about it. It is just ladle into your funnel and in it goes. It looks so pretty. I really, really wish, and I keep saying this in my recipes, but I really wish you could smell this right now because it smells incredible. Now once you get kind of there, I'm going to be a little bit messy. Take the other end and just kind of smoosh it down. Now we're going to just keep piling more in. But like I said, you want that liquid in the end to come above your tomatoes. And you can see it just coming up in the jar as I push those down. Because in the end, the weight is going to push all the uh, matter below the liquid line at the top. So there we are. We had a little bit left over, but basically we got uh, 14 cups, which is exactly what uh, I was hoping for. We did have to quickly throw in one extra uh, or two extra tomatoes just to kind of make it easy, but then we ended up with a little extra after that in the pot. So um, we may have panicked for nothing, but that's okay. Next step, we already did a trial to make sure it was going to work, uh, is take your weight and put it on top and make sure that liquid comes up and covers all your um, tomatoes. Some of the cilantro will float to the top, but it does stay below the weight, which is, or does stay in the water, which is fine. There's that one. And then this one's actually the smaller uh, mouth jar. Oh, it's going to overflow. We may have got a little overzealous. Maybe not. Might be just fine. And then you just set your rubber uh, nipple on there, and we're going to get some uh, fresh rings for those. So at this point, you're going to sit this on a shelf somewhere in the basement or cellar or somewhere cooler and dark um, for three days and give a little taste test, see if it's to your liking. I wouldn't go beyond four days of fermenting, but really that's just going to depend on the temperature. Uh, if it's a little warmer, three days is definitely enough. Four days if you've got a bit cooler temperatures down there. But there you have it, fermented salsa.